Hi everyone, my name is Steve Lawson. My name is Anya Fofana. Welcome to the Cigna Masters live scanning sessions where we're highlighting our intelligently efficient solutions. So today we are uh, live from our global headquarters here in Waukesha, Wisconsin, and we are in our Cigna Voyager Bay. So we've had some late, uh, some recent innovations, uh, particularly with this system around um, the new coil technology with air. So we thought we would highlight with, uh, that with you today, as well as talk about that uh, with some of the MSK imaging. Yes, and we are really excited to show you today um, the air coils on the Voyager scanner. And we just want to go over and uh, show the coil itself what it is all about. So here uh, we have the air A coil available for the Voyager scanner. And you see, uh, it is the same as you hopefully know already our other air coils, that it looks like a blanket and it feels like a blanket. So you can easily like uh, twist and turn it around um, uh, as you um, know maybe our other air coils as well. It's really, really flexible and that is why we are so excited to scan with the, these coils also in Voyager because that really opens up so many opportunities, especially in regards of MSK scanning, which was always really struggling for an um, MRI tech before. Yeah, typically when you would you know, have a coil and you would overlap the elements so close, um, they would detune and decouple. But with this technology, we don't see that so much. So it really allows you to be closer to the anatomy. So if you're doing a long bone, a joint or something like that, and you wanted to get the coil closer, that's going to maximize your signal to noise. And then you're also going to be able to use really great parallel imaging uh, accelerations with this coil to reduce the scan time and increase your productivity as well. And all the other rules apply with this coil as well. So, for example, you can use it in combination. So, thinking about uh, the combination with the embedded the PA coil is uh, no problem. So, you can use signal from posterior elements of the table. Anteriorly, you can use that coil. You can com even combine multiple coils. So, here we do have the second area coil. And uh, what just Steve mentioned is that there are no really um, rules um, applied to that coil and how to position them. So, you can overlap those two coils as much as needed. So, you can have really a large overlap or a, a small overlap. Anything is allowed and always will give you a really nice image quality. Yeah, and these coils have a lot of coil density, so there's many elements inside of the coils. So, um, you know, from a user's perspective of being able to select the appropriate coil while they're scanning, it's pretty seamless, actually. The um, user interface, just, just select the icon that you're scanning, the coil you're scanning with, and that's really it. And based on your field of view, where you're scanning through the coil, it appropriately turns off and on the coil. And it does so really intelligently. So maybe you're using a certain parallel imaging factor that uh, you know the system's trying to achieve for you to get um, you know a shorter scan time. It can accommodate elements within the field of view and um, be a, allow you to get the accelerations that you really want. Okay. So we have one of our coworkers ready for you guys to show you some uh, positioning and uh, what our ideas and how to utilize this kit. We just want to uh, let him put uh, hop on the table first, and we want to show you some ideas around maybe uh, for your real life um, for spine imaging. So maybe your patient is coming in and tells you, "Oh, I cannot lay on my back. Uh, I am so much in pain." So now with the scanner, you have a white table, you have the air coil. You can just tell your patient, "Please find a position, however you want, on the table." So I will ask him, maybe go on your side. Yeah, just like first. And, yes. That's on your side, and you're on your head first, like, like this, and find it comfortable. So maybe you can cuddle up like he would be in his own bed. So then we can just put this coil around him, and you can see you have uh, all the elements available on the spine where needed. And uh, that is an, um, a positioning he might tolerate for the next um, 15 minutes to do a spine, which is really, really nice and convenient now. So another thing uh, which is uh, really nice with these coils, um, if you have a long bone scanning, so for example, you want to scan the humerus, you can ask your volunteer or your patient again to go on his back. Maybe he will ask that too. And now uh, we don't have to like think about um, where the pathology, if it is maybe in the shoulder or the elbow, since we have this large coil available, I would just go ahead and wrap that around entirely through the arm, as you can see here. And you see that we have coverage starting in the shoulder 
goes all the way below the elbow. So now you can have your large shoulders, you bone, and finally you can like display two joints in one skin, which is really, really uh, huge. I think. Yeah. Humerus has always been a challenging exam in MR, and I think just um, you know rigid coils don't give you that um, flexibility to be able to have great coverage around the anatomy. So it's a really great solution for that. And then for sure, uh, I just want to show you before we like really start with the live scanning session for abdomen scanning as well. Uh, you see that you don't have to use any straps when you scan an abdomen because this coil is really it doesn't look like a blanket only it feels like a blanket. So when you put it on top of your patient, it will fall down and really like um, um, fits the uh, the anatomy perfectly. That you that you don't have to worry about like bringing the elements closer to the to the anatomy. It's already happening by nature, right? Yeah. And you can scan with this coil. You know, maybe if your patient is uh, really large, but you wanted to scan with it maybe in another, another direction. direction. You can easily just rotate the coil. You get a little more coverage in the Z direction to give you just uh, a little more coverage with the anatomy that you might need. And the good thing is you don't have to let the system know how you position the coils. Since we do have an air touch on the scanner, which is our new tool to recognize coils, we are creating all the sensitivity map before we start the scan. So the system does exactly know how the coil is on the patient and will understand uh, how to turn on the elements needed for making and providing the best image quality. Okay, so that's just some ideas, and now uh, we want to do maybe a long bone scan uh, on the leg. So I will ask uh, Mike again to get up and then maybe go in feet first, and then he finally gets also a comfortable pillow from us because <laughs> we treat our co workers most of the time nice. <laughs> okay. And then I will, um, when we just want to maybe go with the, um, with the leg. So just go with your hand over here. Perfect. And also here you see um, that it nicely covers the ankle until the knee without any issues, which is really, really convenient. And then I just wrap around the coin and as Steve said, I don't have to think about like overlapping too much or too less. I can do whatever is really, um, doable on that particular patient. So if I want to overlap more and really do that strict, then I can do so. Okay, perfect. I think it's possible for you, right? Um, okay, and then we just go ahead and start uh, with the exam. I will give him the squeeze ball. Yeah, the, the lower legs here. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we are back on the user interface um, where you see that we already selected the protocol and we just go ahead and start the scan. So we encourage if you have any questions, please uh, put them in the chat and then we can uh, answer any questions while we're sitting here talking about this, uh, this new coil and scanning. That was really, it's really the, the biggest advantage I really have with the air coils is that it's so easy to um, put them on the patient and to fix them on the patient and have coil elements close to the anatomy. That's really uh, the biggest advantage. Okay, we scanned the left one, right? Let me see if I want to have another. I think the local light is already good enough for me. So I just go ahead and start with uh, with the first uh, field of view. So I'm running a sagittal 
heel here and I want to cover the entire leg and you can see I have a large field of view. So here um, you see the coil coverage offered on that um, particular um, anatomy. You see that we have really an entire coverage of the knee and until the ankle. So it's really uh, a large field of view which is offered here and I can cover two joints and one scan. And I will want to run um, uh, this first sequence and a stir contrast, and then I do exactly the same with the T1 contrast. Um, and then we can see um, how nicely the images turn out. Okay. One other thing maybe which we want to highlight and which we want to mention is that we don't have to like think about which coils to use. Um, what we do here is uh, happening in the background was a coil calibration. So. Whenever the scanner is running a localizer scan or another um, scan where we like put new coils in, in consideration, it does this create a sensitivity map. Mm -hmm. So a sensitivity map means that we turn on every single element of the scanner and we do turn on the coil element in that field of view. Yeah. So the technologist doesn't have to think about which modes to activate, which coils to activate. The system does that all. Automatically. automatically because the software does and what happens since we have a touch on the scanner is that there are way less mistakes making yeah. even if you are a long experienced uh, tech um, you sometimes forget to really turn on the right coil element elements because maybe your phone is ringing or your patient wants something for you but uh, with having a touch uh, in the background uh, I can really focus on the most important things sure. yeah. it's really nice okay Maybe while this is running, we want to look at the first um, images uh, which we've seen in the in the field. Sure. Yeah. So we've got some cases. I'm going to pull up here of uh, some examples. Uh, let me start with this one. So um, you know, one difficult exam uh, historically is like a, uh, a sternum. You know, this is a sternoclavicular joint. Wanted to highlight. You know, uh, this is. With the patient breathing, it's likely that you know traditional imaging would have a lot of motion artifact on those, but we can use um, Propeller uh, MB, which is a, a new technique with Propeller that allows us to um, get excellent results, and we can even maintain uh, T1 weighting. And you'll notice the TR and TE and the echo train all are um, shorter uh, values that allows you to maintain your great T1 tissue contrast. So I think there's some um, great image quality there with that. And then also you can do all kinds of different contrasts with it. Uh, in addition to T1 and T2, the example on the bottom left here is a stir. So um, you can appreciate the resolution and quality there with that. And then they also have done the same scan here on an axial plane. Um, so propeller P1 uh, for three minutes. The stir uh, here, uh, this is a traditional stir uh, non-propeller, but you can see really nice SNR and great image quality. Uh, Alerta Plumer asks, Plumer asks if, um, how many elements or channels are in the air coils? So this particular air coil has 16 channels in it um, for this system uh, right now. Um, for the other systems, um, the uh, 3T systems and then the artist system, we have uh, a 30 channel anterior array mm -hmm. air coil. So. Another thing which you can really appreciate here uh, when you look at the um, SC joint or the sternum is that um, the air coil has like it goes as close to the anatomy as needed. And that is really important here, thinking about your patient's um, status, that they might have like a big neck or that they have a tiny neck. And sometimes it's really hard when you work with like bulky coils to get coils as close to the sternum as possible because maybe the shoulders are uh, going up or maybe uh, his neck is really big. With the air coils, you don't have the issue anymore because you can really like pull that coil as close to the sternum as needed. Or even, you know, the patient could have a lot of pain Right, having mm -hmm. a lightweight coil. These these coils are um, two kilograms, I think, um, with this particular coil. So so that's going to be a lighter coil, better experience for the the patient themselves. So less complaints for the technologists. Yeah. <laughs> 
and we've heard our customers tell us this as well, you know, like um, uh, patients that have had many MRs, they'll say, wow, that was a very different experience this time. Mm -hmm. So uh, patients are even commenting on how much better it is too. So uh, that's a great, great thing. Um, so another difficult exam in that region uh, is neck imaging. So here's an example of a brachial plexus. I think um, those have been kind of a challenge, but this allows us to get uh, you know, the coil closer to the anatomy to get uh, better results in this way. We're using cube here, um, and you can do cube with hypersense to reduce the scan time. Um, so um, hypersense is uh, a compressed sensing technique that uh, use, uses data sparsity to accelerate the examination much faster. And then you have uh, hypercube also being turned on. So we're reducing the phase field of view um, a bit there, and you don't have to be so concerned about wrap. So you'll notice the phase field of view is kind of cut in this direction uh, because we wanted the uh, extended Z direction. You don't necessarily want it, um, you know, right to left. So that's pretty advantageous, I think, in the end, because it can help reduce scan time too. And you get great results where you can track the nerves all the way down you know, into the um, past the lung fields and down into the humerus. So that's great. And then this example is uh, a lava acquisition. So uh, for maybe you want to do a gradient echo, uh, post contrast or something like that. So this is a nice uh, way to do that too. And we want to be quick. When we look at the scan times for the lava flex, it only took two minutes um, to acquire. And you, you, you can use the Dixon technique again, which mm -hmm. allows you to have homogeneous fat depression. Yep. And then you'll get the in phase and out of phase fat image also. Yeah, mm -hmm. so that's that's really nice uh, thing there. Uh, here's an example, also just to show you uh, an example of a couple different planes here. I wanted to highlight, but uh, you know this is a, a stir of the humerus. So we're wrapping the uh, coil around the anatomy, uh, getting really close there. So three minute acquisition for this, um, three millimeter slices. And if you'll notice the resolution on this one. We're doing 768 by 400 resolution with a three millimeter slice. And you'll note that the, the scan time is only a minute here. So a minute six. Um, so these coils really do give you that acceleration that you would, that you would need to be able to get a uh, rapid acquisition. So that's excellent. Um, another example here. So, so we were just trying to play with the acceleration. So this is the, the same thing as that other scan I showed you, but we were just accelerating maybe like the factor of 1.5 or two, where the other one was more uh, like the factor of three or four. And we saw that the image quality stays the same with even accelerating higher. So yep. that is why we are always accelerating really high now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then a new technique that we have, um, this is a uh, zero TE acquisition to see cortical bone. So very interesting here. So this is a 3D volume. One thing to note that this acquisition is entirely silent. So, um, you know, the gradients are not ramping off and on very rapidly, making a loud noise. So it's a, a silent acquisition. This is a minute and 47 seconds, and we're able to get uh, really great information here with cortical bone, kind of a CT-like image, if you will. Um, so this is a really cool thing. Um, we're able to take this as a volume and then you can, you know, maybe in certain cases where you might want to uh, 3D print these volumes, you can 3D print them and get good, great images um, of uh, the bones, which is unique uh, for this particular acquisition. We don't usually see that much detail in, in uh, MR with that, so. Okay. Kind of move over here, we'll let you see what Anya is doing. Yes, so um, we acquired the first sagittal planes. The first one was the stir, the second was for was a T1, and they are all finished now. So I want to go here into the quick view and show you the results. I split here my layout that we can appreciate really one image by one, and I will zoom in and see how nicely we cover the knee joint and the um, ankle joint really in one field of view. Mm -hmm. That is, I think, uh, something which makes every life easier now. Yeah. So there's, you know, some cases where you're imaging the ankle where you want to see uh, the Achilles insertion and maybe the patient has a torn Achilles and it's retracted. This allows you to, you know, just have the flexibility and freedom during the scan to just set up for an ankle. Um, we have some immobilization devices you could use for an ankle and just wrap the coil 
and then you'll have enough coverage also to to um, go up to mid calf easily mm -hmm. and be able to uh, see a retracted tendon or something like that. And it's really nice for all these patients coming in when they have like unclear pain where mm -hmm. you never knew where you want to scan. And now you have really the option to like, yeah, do one scan and cover the entire entire leg. Here is an example of doing it in a coronal view. See nicely um, the knee is displayed mm -hmm. and we go all the way down. All scan times are really like cut short uh, because we can accelerate high with these um, air coils. Here's a, an example of a two minute scan. And uh, a last thing which we wanna, really want to emphasize is um, the new software helping us for um, the coil uh, pick, which we call air touch. So here on the user interface, we are just selecting um, the entire coil. And here I just want to show you in a coverage where we have less S to I coverage how nicely and precise this new tool works. So on the sagittal view, you see here the coil um, positioning and uh, the gray line shows where the coil is on that leg and the blue shows which coil elements are selected by the software. So when I move my field of view around, you see in a second, it just changes the, the pick and uh, you don't have to worry about like really which coil elements to turn on and to turn off. The software does exactly know which coil elements gives you the most signal, which has the most noise and really only selects the coil elements needed and uh, making the best image quality. This is something I appreciate on my daily work so much because uh, it never happens anymore that you are scanning for two or three minutes and uh, you might see like images where you haven't selected the right coil, mm -hmm. correct? Yeah. So that makes it a lot, uh, a lot easier for sure. Once again, if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the chat. Got a few more minutes here. Mm -hmm. We are just running now um, an actual view of PD pet set. Also like a fast scan, two minutes, 16 seconds. Uh, Not Hello? So here the actual PD fat set images, and you can see that is why we did that scan, that even though we scanned large field of views at the beginning, there's um, not a problem here to switch like to small field of views. And that is really like thinking about like all these pathologies where you don't know where to scan. Um, you can start always with a large field of view, and if you see something happening, then you can really focus and go with like small field of views. Here's a 16 field of view, and you can go even smaller. Yeah. So that is why um, the air coil gives you all the opportunities to really uh, um, have an easy scanning session, I would say. Yeah, I mean, I think historically a lot of times um, customers thought when they were switching coil from a dedicated coil to something that was a little more patient friendly, like a, a flex coil or something like that, that they um, immediately thought, well, I'm not going to have the signal I have with my dedicated coil. Let me adjust my technique. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't think that's really the case a lot of times with the um, air coils. It allows you to maintain the resolutions that you're typically, you know, you've been scanning all along. So you can note here that it's really nice. Small field of view and great resolution too. Yeah, and switching from small to big is is doesn't mm -hmm. involve any repositioning of the patient anymore. You can just do it with one coil, which is like really helping you on a daily work. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay. Let me do maybe one more scan to set up. We want to maybe show um, one more Dixon technique here, which is also um, available on all of our sequences. In that case here, I'm running again, maybe a coronal view where we um, have a T1 contrast uh, with Dixon.
and then we can show you So I'm going to show you a couple of examples here too of an, a spine scan on the cubitus with the air coil. Um, it was on the Cigna artist, but this is where the patient uh, um, or the uh, scan subject was scanned um, on the uh, Cigna artist with the air coil. Uh, it's a slightly different version of the air coil, but uh, nonetheless, the patient is in a comfortable position you're able to put this directly on their spine and image them this way. So we're starting to see a lot of interesting ways customers are using this in the field to uh, to demonstrate that. It's all about um, you know working and improvising sometimes with what your patients can accommodate. We realize that. So so this offers you a great solution. We've even seen like really customers using the air coils for doing a brain scan in case somebody's coming in and is really injured and you cannot fit them in any other coil then you are even able to wrap around these flexible points um, around the brain as well. This is an axial 3D volume so. And sagittal propellers different fields of view there just so you get an idea how that works so all right we just have a few more minutes left uh, in the session maybe there are some more questions um, from the audience Uh, maybe while we're waiting, we could show something else about the coil, maybe just some routine abdomen imaging yeah. that the coil actually can do well. So let me pull up another case here. Okay, so I just saw the question in the in the chat, and uh, here is the example for the abdomen, and uh, the the person who typed in the question guessed right. So we do have the signal anteriorly from the um, area A and posteriorly from the table, which uh, where the coil element is embedded in the table. So that's with the sixteen channel air coil. Uh, let me pull up another exam here. So this is entirely free breathing abdomen. So this uh, couple of examples here I can show. Some abdominal energy. All free breathing. So free breathing abdomen exam. Here's an example of a um, non-contrast renal MRA. Turned out very nice with the air coil. Diffusion, MRCP. You can see uh, nice results here with the MRCP. So it does even uh, great abdominal pelvis imaging as well as MSK. So we feel like the coil uh, performance has uh, been really good and we've been really impressed with how that's turning out so and here's the last scan we just did um that was uh, utilizing the dixon technique so we get per slice four different image impressions so that we get the water selective the vet selective the in face and the post face you can do that in any contrast here in that case we picked the t1 contrast and you see that you have a really large field of view scanning again with nice uh vet selective images which is uh, an easy way to do now Yep. Okay.
right, great. So uh, tomorrow we do have another session. So we hope that you guys will join us for that. Should be really interesting. We'll be highlighting some more intelligently efficient solutions that we have and our latest innovations. So once again, thank you for joining. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you. Bye.